السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على 
الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We praise Allah تعالى who sent to mankind over the ages messengers as beacons of light directing people from the many erroneous and crooked paths which lead to misery in both worlds to the one straight path which guides to contentment in this life and Allah's pleasure in the afterlife. He immortalized their stories in order for the believers to be comforted in the fact that their struggles are not unique to them but were shared by those better than them in the past and in the end victory was for Allah's party. He sent the messengers as models of human perfection in order to be looked up to and followed. My dear brothers and sisters, man is predisposed by nature to copy and imitate. The degree to mimic others is commensurate to the degree of the superiority the other has. And so the young mimics the old and the student mimics the teacher and the poor mimics the rich and the weak mimics the strong and the apprentice copies and emulates the master. Imitation has such a powerful impact on our behavior and character. We feel a sense of affiliation to those we copy. The one who wears the clothes of the scholars associates with them. The one who wears the clothes of athletes feels connected to them. The influence that idols yield on us is so powerful. It can change what we say and what we do and can even change who we are. It is an established fact that man's actions are more influential and effective on others than their speech. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he concluded the truth of Al-Hudaybiyah, and ordered the companions who had intended to perform Umrah. He commanded them to shave their heads despite them not having started the rites of Umrah. They did not move from their place. It was the only command that Rasul had ever given which the companions did not obey immediately due to their sorrow and sadness. And so he went into his tent and Umm Salama saw the sorrow on his face and his fear for his companions that Allah might curse them for not obeying him. And so she said, go out and call the barber and tell him to shave your head and they will follow suit. 
And so he did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was that his companions saw him shave his head and they went and then they began to shave his head their sh and began to shave their heads immediately. And so in summary, we are prone by nature to imitate, to mimic, to copy. Thus Allah Ta'ala made it clear for us who we should follow and copy. He started by commanding his messenger first, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to adhere to the example of his fellow prophets who had preceded him. He said, Jalla Jalalu, Ulaika alladheena hada Allahu fabi hudahu muqtadih. Those are the ones whom Allah has guided, the previous messengers and prophets. So follow after their guidance. This formed a great part of the messenger's education and continued refinement of his already exemplary and perfect character. He reached the pinnacle of human perfection in manners, conduct, speech, action, worship and service. Allah fashioned him into the archetypal human, the model of excellence and flawlessness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His example is not for us to just admire, but to copy and to follow. And so Allah Ta'ala, he said, لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Most surely there has been an excellent role model for you in the Messenger of Allah and for anyone who has been putting their hope in Allah and expecting the last day and has remembered Allah frequently. Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala ordered us to follow the Prophet's every command. He said, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever the Messenger brings you, accept it. And whatever he, and whatever he forbids you, abstain from it. When the command was difficult to comprehend, even for the companion Umar رضي الله عنه, when he was unhappy with the terms of the truth in Al-Hudaybiyah, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, who never flinched, never hesitated to believe the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow his command with absolute certainty that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can only bring what is good for his ummah. Umar came to him and he said to him, and, he, and Umar said to Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, is he not the Messenger of Allah? He said, yes, he's a messenger of Allah. He said, and are we not the Muslims? He said, yes, we are the Muslims. And he said, and are they not the polytheists? He said, yes, they're the polytheists. So he said, so why are we compromising in our religion? He didn't like the terms of the truth. And Abu Bakr's response was, Oh Umar, ilzam gharza. Oh Umar, ilzam gharza. Umar, adhere to his, to his footing, to where he plants his feet. Wherever he plants his feet, stick to it. Ilzam gharza, fa inni ashhadu annahu Rasulullah. For I bear witness that he is the Messenger of Allah. And Umar radiallahu an said that he continued to give charity for years because of this, because of what happened on that day when he went and objected to Abu Bakr and then went on to object to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only because he thought that there was a compromise in the deal. This event and others, my dear brothers and sisters, demonstrates the great example provided to us by the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thus earning them Allah's pleasure and guidance. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا and the pioneers, the front runners, the forerunners, the first of the emigrants and supporters, and those who followed them in righteousness, Allah became well pleased with them, and they became pleased with Allah, and He has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they abide forever. That is the great triumph. Here Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He tells us that those who come after the first Muslims will attain, will attain Allah's pleasure and His gardens on the condition that they follow the example of Al-Muhajireen wal Al-Ansar, of the emigrants and the Ansar, the supporters from al Madina, Making the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also role models for us too. 
follow and to imitate in addition to the companions and to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have been guided to the example of ibrahim al khalil alayhi salam and those who were with him allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi ibrahim wa alladhina ma'ahu idh qalu li qaumihim inna bura'a minkum wa mimma ta'buduna min duni allah kafarna bikum surely there has always been an excellent role model for you in Ibrahim and those with him when they said to their people we disown you and what you worship apart from Allah we have disbelieved in you or we have disbelieved in you meaning disbelieved in your polytheism in your shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah confirms that they are the best of role models لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِيهِمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ indeed there has always been an excellent role model in them meaning ibrahim and those with him for you uh, for you and for anyone who has put their hope in allah in the last day now the basis of their excellence dear brothers and sisters and what qualifies them as role models is their worship of allah and disavowal of false deities thus allah tabarak wa ta'ala directed his directed his messenger to the creed of Ibrahim. He said, ثم أوحينا إليك أن اتبع ملة إبراهيم, إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين. Thus we reveal to you, follow the creed of Ibrahim, who was pure in creed, and uh, 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 who was pure in creed, and never was he of the polytheists. My dear brothers and sisters, what is also praiseworthy is the imitation of children to their parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And those who attained faith, and whose offspring followed them in faith, we have united them with their offspring, and we have not deprived them of anything of their work. This verse, as Ibn Kathir, he said, indicates Allah's great bounty and generosity with his creation. And that the believers whose children follow them in belief, in faith, will have their children united with them in, this, in the same station in paradise. Even if their children had not performed the same deeds, the same degree of deeds which would earn that station. But that is in order to comfort and to reward the parents with the company of their children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of a righteous son who followed his righteous father and forefathers in the example of Yusuf, in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam whom Allah tabarak wa ta'ala quoted as saying إِنِّي تَرَكْتُ مِلَّةَ قَوْمٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ Indeed, I have forsaken the creed of a people who do not believe in Allah and regarding the hereafter, they are deniers. And I have followed the creed of my forefathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Never was it for us to associate anything with Allah. What is disastrous and destructive, my dear brothers and sisters, is for parents to set a bad example for their children to follow. Fostering evil habits over years creates a culture of blind adherence to the extent that when the truth is presented, it becomes it is rejected for the sole reason that the parents did not follow the truth. And when it is said to them, follow what Allah has sent down, they say, Rather, we follow what we found our forefathers following. And so, if we want to predict how a child will turn out in their adulthood, look no further than the parents. How do you think a child will fare if he sees a father who doesn't pray or know his way to the mosque? How do you think a child will fare who sees a father who drinks or uses drugs or uses obscenities and has a foul mouth? or abuses their mother verbally or physically, or makes a living from illegitimate gains, or defrauds the government, or shamelessly lies, 
or accepts bribes and is corrupt, or watches TV shows and movies with explicit content, or listens to vile musicians singing revolting lyrics, or severs family ties and violates all boundaries when there is a dispute within such an environment. How do you think the child will fare? When answering people's questions and clarifying for them the Sharia's position on certain matters, it is no longer a surprise to hear from people, my parents didn't do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed that this is the response that was given to the prophets when they called their people. They said, Inna wajadana aba'ana ala ummatin wa inna ala atharihim muqtadun. Indeed, we found our forefathers following this tradition. And indeed, we are following their footsteps. But to be clear to my young brothers and sisters in attendance today, once you have reached the age of discernment or attained a level of maturity which allows you to distinguish between right and wrong, between halal and haram, you are prohibited from following, uh, from following the command of a parent who tells you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا But if they strive to associate, but if they strive to have you associate with me, whatever you have no knowledge of, then do not obey them. The governor of Al-Basra received, uh, received a message from uh, Yazid, the Khalifa. If he obeyed the command, he would he would anger Allah. And if he disobeyed the command, he would anger the Khalifa. And so he went to Al-Hasan al-Basri, radiallahu an, and he said to him, what should I do? And Al-Hasan al-Basri's words were very succinct. He said to him, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنْ يَزِيدِ وَلَكِنَّ يَزِيدَ لَا يَمْنَعُكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ Indeed, Allah will protect you from Yazid. But Yazid cannot protect you from Allah. And so we say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, if your parents are truly in error, not they stop you from marrying the girl of your dreams. No, that doesn't mean that they're in error. That just means that you're blinded by love, potentially. But if your parents truly are in error, truly commanding you to disobey Allah, truly asking you to perform innovations in the religion and prohibited deeds, then Allah will protect you from your parents, but your parents will not protect you from Allah. So, my... Dear brothers and sisters, and to the parents in particular, fear Allah and know that by having children, you have bore a great responsibility to protect not only yourself, but your children too from the fire. As Allah wa ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum naran wa quduha nasu wal hijara. O you who have attained faith, shield yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones. And do not be of those, do not be of those whom Allah Ta'ala told us will, car will carry the sins of those whom they misguided. Let them carry their burdens complete on the day of resurrection. And some of the burdens of those they led astray without knowledge, undoubtedly. Evil is what they bear. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وإخوانه. My dear brothers and sisters, we are surrounded today by people who compete not only for our attention, but for our hearts and devotion. They vie with one another to amass great numbers of followers, friends and subscribers to their channels and accounts online. There have never been more people with more variety of content than before. And so, who do we follow from this vast world of influencers? Who do we let into our homes and onto our, onto our screens and phones and ultimately into our hearts? 
there must be a standard to follow in this selection process. What is the criteria the Muslim should follow in uh, selecting an influencer? Should they be rich? Should they be funny? Should they be witty perhaps? Should they be political or beautiful or athletic? The best example, surely, is the one who is best in speech. And so, what is the best speech? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in speech than the one who called to Allah and did righteousness and said, I am of the Muslims. The scholars of this ummah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, are the heirs, the inheritors of the prophets. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِينَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا وَإِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ the scholars, and the scholars are the heirs of the prophets, for the prophets did not leave behind a dinar or a dirham. Rather, they left behind knowledge. So whoever takes it has taken a great share. Don't we want to follow those who will guide us to the straight path? Don't we want to follow those who fear Allah most among us? إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Allah said, only those, uh, uh, only those fear Allah from among the servants who have knowledge, who are scholars. Oh, but they're boring, some people would say. When did we start expecting every encounter and relationship to be entertaining? Life isn't all fun and games, uh, my brother and sister. While you play, others are plotting against you. They're the same age as you. They're the same age as you and they're plotting against you and, and against this ummah. It's time to observe some seriousness. It's time to grow up, frankly. While scholars are human, of course, like the rest of us, they are the least compromised, the most fortified, and least prone to error. As for those whose actions do not match their words, no attention should be given to them. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala warned them, and He said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O oh, you who have attained faith, why do you say what you do not do? It is most hateful, most detestable to Allah that you say what you do not do. Other questions to ask when, select other questions to ask when selecting an influencer is, why am I following them? What am I getting out of this deal? Because it is a deal. It is a deal. You give your time. And you give your money in many cases, indirectly of course. But what do you receive in return? What type of growth will you achieve? Will you grow spiritually? Will your character be refined? Will your manners improve? Will you increase in beneficial knowledge? Will your halal income increase? Also, what do they stand to gain from me following them? A higher following means greater endorsement deals. And so what will they plug other than food and drink and cars and clothes? And what use do you have for that? You want to buy their merchandise so you feel part of a team? What captain of a team takes from his teammate and gives them nothing but worthless words? Dear brothers and sisters, you cannot be friends with everyone. It is impossible. Your chest has space for one heart. So be very selective with whom you let into your heart, because it is the seat of love. A man and a man is resurrected on the day of judgment with whom he loves. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al mar'u ma'a man ahab. And in uh, the, 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 the hadith of an average length uh, narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu, a man came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked, when is the hour, when is the day of judgment? And the Messenger said, what have you prepared for it? The man said nothing, except that I love Allah and his messenger. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you will be with those whom you love. Anas then says, we were, not, we were never more glad with anything the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said than this hadith, that you will be with the one whom you love. And so Anas continues, therefore, I love, I love the Prophet and Abu Bakr and Umar. And I, hope that I, and I hope that I will be with them because of my love for them, though my deeds are not similar to their deeds. So my dear brothers and sisters, you will love those who influence you because you do not copy somebody you dislike. 
So be very careful in choosing who influences you. The opportunities to follow the righteous are abundant and present before you. Do not turn them down and instead choose to follow a musician or an actor or an entertainer or sports person whose, whose, personal, life is, whose personal life is more than blemished. His personal life or, their, or her personal life which is actually not very personal because it's been made incredibly public, is nothing but deviation after deviation. Know that they will deviate you from the path of Allah and you will have no one to blame but yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا and beware of the day when the unjust bites his hand saying I wish I had followed the way of the messenger woe to me I wish I had not taken so and so as a close friend he definitely he definitely led me astray from the reminder after it had come to me and Satan has always been a betrayer of man. It is indeed shameful that someone would pride themselves for following, uh, for following people who have strayed far from Allah. They send messages of support when their idol is feeling down. They express their love for their idol who doesn't even know their name. They send thoughts and prayers when so to somebody who doesn't think and will never ever think about you. Those those who were misled, my dear brothers and sisters, those who were misled by their influences will regret ever knowing them. And they will curse them. And they will pray for their punishment to be intensified. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَعْنَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ سَعِيرًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا لَا يَجِدُونَ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا يَوْمَ تُقَلَّبُ وُجُوهُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ يَقُولُونَ يَا لَيْتَنَا أَطَعْنَا اللَّهَ وَأَطَعْنَا الرَّسُولَ وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَاءَنَا فَأَضَلُّونَ السَّبِيلَ رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضِعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ وَلْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا Indeed, Allah has cursed the disbelievers and has prepared for them a blaze abiding therein forever, finding neither ally nor supporter. On the day when their faces are turned in the fire, they say, if only we had obeyed Allah, and obeyed the messenger and they said our lord indeed we obeyed our masters and chiefs huh? those who influenced them to disobey allah indeed we obeyed our masters and chiefs but they led us away from the way they led us away from the path our lord give them double the punishment and curse them with a great curse and so my dear respected brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sum up all of this, and no need for a half an hour khutbah, he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu allaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who have attained faith, be mindful of Allah, and be with the truthful. Hada wa sallu wa sallimu ala khayri al-anam, fa inna allaha amarakum bi amrin bada'a bihi bi nafsihi wa thanna bi malaikati qudusihi thumma bikum ayyuhal mu'minun. Faqala jalla min qa'il, inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusallun ala al-nabi, يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعلي بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله